Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today we're in the van and we're at it again. We're fitting some new kit. This is the Orcs Beam AC, I better put it the right way up, the AC 1200. This is a control panel for, let me get it out. This 12 gang switch panel. I should have got that out first, shouldn't I? You know what I mean? But everybody thinks that this piece of kit here does all the hard work. This doesn't, this is just a little switch that sends a signal down there to this panel. What's so good about this panel? Well, a mechanical relay is quite big, it's quite bulky. They have lots of moving parts in them and they're not very reliable, they fail quite a lot. This aux beam panel has 12 and they're all stuck in here, solid state relays. Now solid state relays are electronic relays, they don't have any moving parts and they are the brains behind this operation. You can delegate to each one of these solid state relays a function, so it can be a toggle switch, it can be a momentary switch or it can be a pulsing switch. So no need for any other relay. Don't listen to what you hear. You don't need to put other relays on this and we will show you how this works. If you want to do something in addition to what this is designed to do, you possibly need relays to do that. But for me, this is gonna do 99% of everything we want it to do. So I'm gonna install this today, but I thought I should spend a little bit of time telling you about this because it gets missed and passed over so many times this is the brains of the operation and it is so well constructed i think it deserves a little bit more credit than it gets now the other thing should have already got this out as well the other good thing about this is that get out of the box it's remote control you can have this with you outside your vehicle and you can play around with it. So if you're working outside and you think, oh, I need another light on, you can press this button and it'll put your perimeter lighting on. It'll put your roof bar lighting on, your reverse lights. You delegate whatever you want this to be when you're programming this panel. So what we're going to do today is install all this, show you how it works, show you how we've installed it, and then show you how we select and delegate each location on here. Because you can, you, with this panel, you can group multiple switches together. So I could have it so I press one switch and it brings on four different lights all at the same time. It is a great bit of kit, it's fantastic. So when I'm setting up, I want a switch on here that I just press and it brings every light on every light on the vehicle and we can then use that to do our setting up scoping out the area walking around looking for dog eggs and sticks and spiky bits things in the ground that you don't want around your camp when you're setting up um yeah i think this is going to be a brilliant addition to our van so in this box it comes with everything you need to install it it comes with multiple different types of brackets um, it even comes with spare fuses in the back of the lid i've shown you them products for the remote to work it comes with an antenna there is two types of bracket for this for the light for the switches there is multiple stickers <laughs> multiple stickers of every orientation that you can think of so you can use this panel to power just about anything and switch anything. Absolutely brilliant bit of kit. I, I think the quality of it so far is brilliant. Oh yeah, and this little controller, I can't show you it. Yes, I can. It's magnetic. <laughs> so you can sit that anywhere you want, in your cab. You can have it under your van while you're working, or you could, you know, you could just put it somewhere. Good chance I'd lose it if I stick it out on the van. But um, I think, I'm going to have fun playing with this. I better keep it out of the reach of uh, mischievous people. Um, certain people like to play with other people's remote controls. You know who you are, Neil C. <laughs> um, so I'll be hiding that remote. Yeah, what else is there? There's, there's loads of it to get. There's a little antenna. 
but um everything you need is in here so as we go through i'm not gonna i'm not gonna show you the box everything in the box we don't do unpacking videos anymore they're they're boring we just want to get to the meat of it so let's get stuck in you may recall that we've uh we've done quite a bit of work <laughs> with mechanical relays already so this area here is behind my dash i can access this area in about five minutes i remove this panel here a couple of screws out here that all exposes this side that piece there to open that up we take one cover off here slide out the vent two screws in there two screws here and that comes off so for me having this panel set up in here is probably the ideal location now another thing about these solid state relays is they're quiet these click every time you flick one of them on accidentally hit the button there but every time you flick one of these on it clicks I don't know if you can hear that. So it's latching the relay. So yeah, you don't have that with this panel. It is quiet. Um, disadvantages with these, with solid state relays, they can get hot under heavy loads, but these can switch up to around about 100 amps. So... These, this is regulated to 30, this is regulated, this group here, regulated to 20, 10 and 5. But solid state relays are really good at what they do. Downside to them is sometimes they fail, but they fail in the on position where a mechanical relay would normally fail in, in the off position and it wouldn't work, it just wouldn't operate. So, good points, bad points. Chances of these failing? Very slim. It's It does happen, but not that often that's all i'm going to say not that often right thing to do now strip all this out label everything up as we take it out because i'm going to reduce a lot of this switching cables a lot of this panel wiring as well we're going to chop it all right down label it up to what it is and just go from there we've got multiple cables running across to there them switches are going to go I haven't decided where I'm going to mount the switch panel yet. It may replace our diesel heater up there because I'm not happy with that. I'm going to probably move that into the cab area over there. So let me show you how I'm doing this. I'm identifying which fuse I want out. And then what we'll do is we'll trace down into the fuse board, whichever fuse that is. We'll disconnect it there before we take any other cables off up here. So we've got no power beyond the fuse board all the all the equipment should be isolated and uh, i could do them all at once but i want to keep it organized i'm doing it one at a time so i don't trip myself up right let's free up a few connections here we can always connect them back up later let's have that up out of the way well, so far, that is everything that's come out. There's a few more switches. Um, I've not thrown them on the floor because I will have a use for them in the future. But yeah, I'm going to keep the relays, but the rest of it will just use that wire for when we mock stuff up, to be honest. So we throw nothing away. We always keep it in a bag, and that's why my garage looks the way it does. This is where we're up to. I've obviously disconnected all the cables so while wow. while wow, we disconnected all the old relays and the feeds and everything i took out the old fuse board that was there i'm going to mount the new switch in its place this is a breaker um, we can just reset if anything goes wrong but that requires a 16 mil feed so we've got these cables we can put away i'm going to do that next this is the auxiliary feed that uh, lets you know that you've got an ignition for so any ignition powered circuits. Any circuits that you want to come on when you've got the ignition on will come on. And that's our flat wire. So basically we're down to ground there with the earth. I've got the battery tray all ready out to, to put the new cable up and in. And I've just got no way to make the crimps off. And I know where they're at. <laughs> 
just going to run through this quickly for you. So the light bar has three cables. So we have a feed there for the main power for the for the light bar itself, and this feed here is for the coloured side of the light bar, and that that's the uh, the black is the is the negative for the system. We've got the same on the bonnet mounted lights as well. We've got the white there for the amber running lights and the red for the main spots. Now all these earths are linked, so that's why we don't need an earth in there and we don't need one in there. I say earth, I mean negative. Okay, so I know it looks a bit odd, but we've done it right. <laughs> Bear with me. So we've used up four spaces already, and that's on the light bar and the spots on the bonnet. So the rest of it, these are just straightforward, normal connections. So you'll see a black and a red there. That'll go into one. Um, I'll probably bring that into number five. These are, this is the perimeter lighting on the roof. All these are going to have to be extended. Um, they're just not long enough to reach where I want them to do. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll do that. We'll heat shrink them and then they can be connected up onto the panel. So to tidy up our final connections, I'm using what's known as bootleg ferrules. Well, these are ideal. I hate just pinching cables directly into terminals because what happens is most people over tighten them and, and this causes a multitude of problems. So you can get one of these kits. I think this is about 10 quid with all the parts, you know, even the in the even the tool for crimping. Let's see if it will focus in. There you go, and that makes a much nicer job, a much secure termination when you're putting it in. You, you you've got a positive feel, and you're safe in the knowledge known that you're not cutting any of the shards of uh, any of the strands. Sorry, of the very very fine cable. Just have a look at this. On this, you've got a battery side. Let me show you that. Battery line. And on this side, you have an auxiliary load. So there you go. Just make sure you get that wired up correctly. We're going to change the location of this now. I've managed to get a crimping tool. So I'm going to mount that on top of the battery. Um, if it goes, it's a little bit easier to get to than going under there looking for a breaker. I was going to have it in the back of the the door, but in all honesty, it should be as close to the batteries we can get it, so that's where it's going to go. All right, that's the main breaker done. Runs up to the board. All the tides now fixed, finished. So what we'll do is we'll give it a quick try. Um, I think what we'll do is we will plug in the keypad, which is here, and we'll give it a little test run. Right. Let's see if this works. Fingers crossed. Hey, it lights up. <laughs> so we've got four circuits wired in there. Let's see how we get on. Right, let's hold that up. Lots of light bar working. Um, number two. Yeah, that's the daylight running light on the light bar working. Spots. A heart, yep. And the side shooter DLR. Let's turn that one off. <laughs> All works. Right. Let's start putting stuff back together so we can get a little bit more organised in here. Kind of let things run away with me. <laughs> um, and I had a little fault as well. When I took the fuse board out, I'd actually disconnected the earth to the van. To the system and uh, when I connected it all back together nothing would work and I couldn't I couldn't put my finger on it and every time I tested the chassis I had 10 volts sitting on the chassis so that kind of rang alarm bells that I've lost my earth or something anyway push come to shove I flipped the panel back and there it was sparking <laughs> when I touched it so Bless and do things um, when you disconnect something, reconnect it, if that's what you're meant to be doing. Don't miss things out, because uh, the panic that was running through me 
ten minutes ago it was um, through the roof. I thought I'd maybe damage my ECU somehow, but um, no, everything works, it lights up, I'm chuffed a bit with that, looks lovely, nice big, you can't really see that, but it is green, maybe see on my finger. Very well lit up, I'm going to see if I can dim it down a little bit, but anyway, happy days, things are working. Well, that's it for tonight. It's a little bit better. We've got it kind of back together, but call it a night. It's it's cold, it's dark, and it's late. So there's always tomorrow. We we'll step closer anyway. So all of these numbers on here line up with the numbers that are on the control the switch panel. So if you want them orientated in a certain way, the thing to do is, if you find, say you want, say that's your high beam, and you want your high beam up there, you just come back to the panel and swap two with six. And then that way, that would give you the, the orientation you're after on your light switch panel. It's that simple, it is really that simple. So I, that is us done now. Last job I've got to do is route this cable and add in the antenna for the remote. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of cable management down here, cable tie on there to dress that in with all the others, and then fit the glove box back into place, and that'll do us there. The aerial, I'm just going to route and mount on the top of that uh, that spotlight there on the bracket, same bracket as that, but. I'm just looking for a way out and I might actually take it back through the front there and that way we're using all the all the right channels there is if you remember a duct all the way through there another great feature about this panel is the cable management everything's been thought out so you bring your cables in from the back you terminate them in you can well I've dressed all mine in quite nice and neatly but when you're finished you literally stick that over the top and that's it, no ugly cable sticking out the front. I know I'm hiding mine behind this panel, but if you wanted that in a cupboard, you could make that nice and, well, it'd look really tidy. The antenna was the last connection to do, so we'll just pop the lid back on now. And that. <laughs> Jobs are good, and all done. Nearly finished. <laughs> I've got a light there. I've got to mount the light switch, um, and I'm just looking for somewhere to do it. And the problem is, um, the brackets that come with this are good, but they don't fit every orientation. So I've come up with a little bit of a problem. I can't mount this where I want to mount it. So I've had to add a couple of my own little brackets on the back. So I want to put it just down here, so when I'm driving, it's quite handy to use. I don't want it up on shore, it's not going to interfere with my leg, where it is there. It's a little bit out of the way, but it's the right position for my hand. So I'm driving along, let's hold the steering wheel, let them just drop down, press whatever I need to press. But yeah, so I'm going to mount that there. I think that'll, I think that'll do. Let's zoom out a little bit. But yeah, about there. So that's it. Sit, that's it sitting in there nicely. I've secured the two brackets on. What we'll do now is unscrew that from there, mount it back on here, and then screw the bracket back up onto here. Hopefully, that's the plan anyway. Twenty minutes later. Me wrestling with my van doesn't make good viewing for you. I know it doesn't, guys, but sometimes we have to show you the crappy bits so you can appreciate how hard this is. So that's in now. Um, it's a little higher than I wanted it to be, but I like the position. I was aiming for that to sit in that little notch there. You shut up. Right, I was aiming for that. To uh, I just confused myself there a little bit. 
I wonder why the radio come on and not the panel. Um, I haven't turned the key yet. It's been a long, long day. <laughs> right. I like where it's at. Let me show. It sits there, but this is my view here when I'm driving. I'll just be able to drop my hand, hit the buttons, and that doesn't look like it's going to be in a nice place. But that is really comfortable for me. And I'll be honest with you, once I know the location of all the buttons, it will just be dead easy. Bang, 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 bang. I'm missing a light. My reverse lights were on a switch. And I haven't transferred that switch over. I've still got a switch to find. I'm wiring. Shit. At the start of this video, I might have said that you wouldn't need any more relays or additional relays. That wasn't true. All of these outlets on the aux bin control panel switch voltage. So they actually put power through them. Now, if you need a volt-free switch, you're going to have to add a relay for that. So I'm adding a relay in there, and that's, that will switch my reverse lights because I tapped that into the micro switch that's on here. Now, if I put power to that, it'll just stay on constantly. It'll always be there. It'll just make a... It'll make... It'll just stay on anyway. So what I'm doing is I've got one of the old relays. I've connected it into the panel. I might switch that. Bear with us. So, if you listen carefully, that's switching that relay. So if you keep watching that mirror there, you should see the reverse light come on. You can hear the click of the relay first. Well, there you go. That is a, a volt-free switch now. Okay, we've installed the control panel, we've installed the keypad. We're now wanting to pair that up um, and get it working. So to, to do that, we need to use our phone. Um, it, is, it is pretty straightforward. So the first thing you need to do is go into your Bluetooth settings on your phone and search for that keypad. Find that keypad, pair your phone to the keypad. Next step, get your aux beam manual in there, the two QR codes. There's an iOS code and there's an, uh, an Android code. Scan them, install that app on your phone, and then you're ready to go. Once you've installed the app on your phone, it's just um, get it open. And it sort itself out. So I've already paired mine up, and I'm just going to show you how to go about it. So first thing to do, click on settings, go to guide, and if you ever get stuck, all the information you require to set stuff up is in the guide so drop back out of guide background you can select any background you want including white we go for that one it looks quite nice out of there select equipment so we are using a 12 way controller um, that's already selected we've already connected it via Bluetooth so there you go that's it shown it connected Drop back out of there. Now, the basic settings straight away are, I'm gonna try and show you this. So you can, that's using that slider there, you can select how bright that is. So let's try and get you in a position there. So sliding it up and down. Oh, it doesn't wanna to play today. My fingers are a bit, little bit dry. There you go. So it will slide up and down. So you can select how bright you want it. I like it quite dim, a bit like myself. So <laughs> the old ones are the best, aren't they? Also, you can change the colour, so you can have a green keypad. So whatever's happening here is being reflected there on the on the keypad. So blue as well. There's a yellow, a purple. And even white, if you want white. I think white's a bit boring, so we'll stick with red because everything else on my dashboard's red as well. Right, the next part. If you look here, I've already allocated um, names and icons to everything I want. So 
let's show you the icons. So for some reason, you can take a photo. I don't know how that works. Something I'm not really interested in. I like the default icons. So there are lots and lots of icons on here. Plenty to choose from. You won't get stuck. You've got plenty of choice. So drop back out of there. You can also set the icon name. So we're currently on the roof bar. The light bar, sorry, which is located on the roof. So I've called that roof and we'll save it. Then there's the mode. So obviously, because we've got solid state relays in that panel now that's behind that cover there, we can choose how they operate. So a toggle switch is your standard toggle switch. You touch it once, it stays on. You touch it again, it goes off. A momentary switch is completely different. You press the button and hold it. And when you release it, it goes back off again. Pulse is exactly what it says. It will pulse on and off. Um, sometimes it'll do it in a pattern as well. I think I think this does a little bit of a pattern. Pulses and then pattern. Don't quote me on that. Let's set up a group. It is dead easy. So what we're going to do is up here there is some text. You can hardly see it because the name of the controller actually overwrites the edit text. So I know it's there. Click on OK because it's just informing you need to have two or more in your group. So let's select our group. So it's going to be our rear cam our rear lights and our perimeter lights. We're going to save that and then we're going to call this um, reverse. Yeah, and save. So there you go, that's how easy it is to set up a group. <laughs> it is that simple. This app is so simple. Now, if I click, let's show you this, if I click on there now, see them two lights come on? Click it off again. Click it on, two lights come on. Click it off. That is our group set up. I have multiple groups there now, so when I put my light bar on, it also brings on my bonnet lights. I press either one of them buttons and it takes it off. My fog lights and another group, and that's them two there, the ambers. I should have brought that on. I've maybe altered that, but I'll have a little look anyway. Turn that off, and my DLRs brings this one on and that one on as well. So pairing up the remote is pretty simple. So what we do is we click the on off button and any other button on here till the red lights come on. Then we click on off on the remote and all them green lights flash on there. And that is it paired up. See that? I can turn the lights on now individually. So simple, so quick. Job done. All at the touch of a button. Now it doesn't have the grouping that the main switch panel has, but you can switch everything on individually. So there's our DLR going on. Front spots. DLR on the little spot cubes there. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's lighting up the front of the van. Then we've got... Let me turn that off. Our front fog lights. I probably haven't got this in the best position, but I'm sure you can see them going on and off. Then there's our ambers, on and off. Our second ambers. And then our floods. So I'm really happy with that. This is gonna come in so handy when we're out and about. I'll just be able to switch the lights on when I'm mooching around. So we're setting up camp, boom. I can have anything I want. I can even have them all on if I want. And then I just, to turn them all off, it even has a memory function, so... So the last thing I do is I've got everything on, press off, they all go off, on, they all come back on. How good is that? <laughs> I can't really give a review because I've only just done it. But from what 
I've experienced so far. I love this. I absolutely love this. I love the mount on the dashboard. I love that. The control panel has tidied up all them horrible little relays. And we're full now. We've got that control panel. We can do so much more with it. If I want to change any of these lights to flashing, I can just go on the app and do it. Brilliant. Absolutely love this bit of kit. Hawks beam, you've knocked it out of the park again. Only downside, more stickers. We need more stickers. More. Just more stickers. Right, I need to find what I'm going to do with them remaining switches. I can't leave them there with nothing, can I? Thanks for watching, and see you again. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.